Christ, Billy, not this again. Just go to sleep. That was the typical response I would get from my dad when I would complain about the noises at night. Mostly scratching and guttural howls, but sometimes it sounded like heavy sliding on the floor under my bed. It's that crap your mother puts on the damn television, my dad would say. My mom loved slasher flicks, but was always fast asleep by the time the noises would start. So dad was the only one I could tell, but he was usually three beers deep by the time I could call for help. After about a month of my complaining, it was a full six. I learned to keep it to myself, and that's when the howls turned to whispers, calling to me, begging me to look under the bed for me to join it there. Three months of this was too much for any boy to handle, so I looked. I peered timidly under the sheets, convinced it would be the last thing I would do. There, under my bed, was a whole other world. Everything was upside down, but it was exactly a replica of my room, like a dark circus mirror reflection of everything I knew, and my bed was the threshold between the two. Terrified, I hid back under my own blankets for the rest of the night, wide awake. Six weeks passed and my fear turned to intrigue. The sounds became less terrifying and more inviting, beckoning me to visit once more. I crawled completely under my bed for the first time soon after. That was 20 years ago. We moved many times and it didn't matter. Even in my adult life, I find the threshold right where it should be, under my bed. Often it's hard to tell where it ends and I begin. When they finally locked me up, the judge said they would throw away the key. Lucky for me, some doors are always open. 